All right, today uh, I'm going to give you an example of trying to use materials to get uh, to get the images you're looking for without the cost of, you know, for example, in this case here, I'm going to show you a, there's three different ways that I, I, that I created a strut here. The first one, uh, the strut, I use a void array, uh, which I'm sure everybody knows what a void array is. Uh, and here I just created the geometry. Uh, I just put the holes in the geometry. And what I did is I created, uh, I have a video on this if you want to see like my ultimate strut. Um, and what I did was I created the geometry and then I put the holes in it. And what I did is I created a void on the back end to kind of give you the length. So if I said I want it to be three feet long uh, off a 20 foot stick, uh, I basically just would, you know, created a void that was 17 foot long and it, was, it would just give you three feet. Okay, here on this one, uh, there's no holes, there's no nothing. What it is, I created a material to look like it had holes in there, okay? And I'll show you how I did that, okay? Now, the, here are the advantages, okay? File size wise, of course, the material one, which was basic, is nothing, there's nothing hardly in there. As you can see, it's 412K. Uh, the geometry holes, which uh, is faster than the array, but end up being a larger file size. I don't know if that really matters, but, and the void array, of course, uh, you know it's creating all those voids and speed wise it suffers okay and as you can see here, i'm going to move the end of this and it roughly takes nine to ten seconds to move the end of that strut this one even though the file size is larger it takes half the time to get that to move its end it's like five six seconds okay here there are no holes and it's just you know it's instantaneous pretty much and oh i forgot to mention this file that i'm in right now it is over a gigabyte um i created you know uh, this one particular project i'm working on and the reason i did that was to to exaggerate how long this was going to take of course if you were just in a uh, you know a blank file this would have been like you know a millisecond and i didn't want that i wanted to show you what a file like you know a gigabyte or larger you know how these are avoid arrays that, that it, you know it really affects you know the speed uh the fire the heart the larger the file size sorry about that um okay so to get this and so for example now right now i'm in realistic and you can see the holes now if i go to shaded uh what you'll what you'll see here is what I, the hatch pattern okay so you still see the holes you won't see through it but you'll see the holes okay all right and they're accurately you know you know drawn in there okay so i'll show you how i got there now okay to create uh the strut you had to, you have to create a hatch pattern and an image okay to create the hatch pattern i use a program which is free you can download for free it's pyrevit and uh make pattern so well, before you do that i have to select what i want okay now when i first did this uh, i was a little disappointed and it doesn't matter whether it's uh you know the pyrevit or any hatch pattern uh the problem is if you try to do a small uh, radius curve, uh, you'll get this image that looks like this. It's like a triangle, you know. And I was like, that's ah, not what I want. I want to show the, you know, the curve. And the way to get around that, uh, I was able to uh, just draw individual segments here, okay. And the way this particular program works is that you select what you want to be a hash pattern. The reason I have these rectangle here is because. I want it to be repeat itself, and I need it to be two inches long, inch and a half, two inches long, inch and a half uh, high here. Okay, so um, okay, now I go to make pattern. Okay, I give it a name. I'm gonna call it strut holes. All right, say fill. Now, in this particular program, if I want to save it to the hard drive, I hit export. Okay, if I just want to create it inside the project itself, I hit create pattern. Okay, when you hit create pattern, it's going to want to know starting point and end point. That's that's where the, re the repetitiveness you know, of the hatch pattern comes in. So if I you know select here and I select there, that is going to give you know Revit the you know your overall dimensions for the hatch pattern. Okay, now you may be wondering why I only did half the hole, and the reason I did that, I'm going to get out of that real quick here. Uh, it's already had the hatch pattern made is that when you go into the family editor you got your reference planes here okay of course I'm in a, a, a drafting view here so what I wanted to do is I wanted it to be uh, you know I wanted to 
the origin point of that hash pattern. I want it to be zero zero here, and I wanted the circle or the hole, sorry, the hole to be right there on zero zero. Okay, actually, take that back. It's not exactly zero zero. It's actually over here, uh, like you know, like a right in between those those you know the two circles or two holes. Sorry. All right, and. The reason I did that was because if you're familiar how hatch patterns work, okay, as you can see here, if I move the geometry, you're going to get the repeating pattern here, okay? Of course, in this case, I don't want that because my geometry is going to be the width of the strut, okay? And the, basically, you know, the, um, the horizontal here, I, you know, you're going to get the repeating pattern, which is two inches, okay? Now, the problem, uh, well, not problem, but if you, like, for example, if I move the geometry, as you can see here, the holes stay relative to the geometry, okay? But if I change the shape of the geometry, you know, the hole patterns are there. They're based off the relative, you know, a zero, zero, okay? Now, because I knew what I was doing here and I just want to be able to change the length of the strut here, I didn't care about you know, what was above or what was below, okay? I only cared about what was to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, okay? And so that's how this hatch pattern worked here and that's why i did half because i wanted you know that zero zero to be right there okay and then to create the images i just used the microsoft uh, snippet tool and i went in here and i basically said okay i created you know the same uh two inches by an inch and a half and grab corner to corner don't grab the black box you don't want the black box uh, you, you can eyeball it better than i just did there and i created a white pattern a black pattern and once that's done I was then able to create, uh, let's go here real quick. Okay, so we got a strut here. Now go to the material and, okay, go to the one that has holes. And basically I created a the hatch pattern for holes, okay? And for appearance, I added, you know, the image basically of, you know the whole pattern and I basically said that the scale was two inches wide an inch and a half uh, tall and for the cutouts same thing I basically two inches wide and that allows me to then you know show the holes now I gotta clarify this one part here okay <laughs> and that is that uh, the actual strut itself if you go back to materials you'll see that there was actually two materials here you know the gold and then the holes okay and the reason why is that if I came into this particular, uh, let me just show you, if I came here and I changed that whole thing to holes, okay, it's gonna look like this. There's gonna be holes everywhere, and that's not what we're looking for. So to get around that, uh, what I did is on the geometry, okay, is I drew a line that, uh, was it inch and a half long? I think it's inch and a half. No, sorry. I think it was an inch here. Um, and so I did it top and bottom. And so once I did that, um, I then, you know, created this whole thing as the the gold, strut gold, okay, uh, material. And then what I did was I came in, oops, to modify and I just painted the surface, okay? All right. I said paint. And I just painted the holes, just a tabbed. So just that line at the top, I did the bottom, and I did this bottom half here, so I want to need a double strut, okay? So once I've painted those holes, then the holes appear, okay? Now, if I change that to shade, I guess I just get the, the hatch pattern here, okay? All right. You can also use the hatch pattern. Uh, this is a detail component, okay? This is a 2D detail component, so sometimes we have to draw strut in a 2D, you know, uh, detail, for example, and I use this as a, you know, here's my hatch pattern, okay? Um, and for example, you know, as you can see here, here's a strut, you know, we do uh, shop drawings for electrical, so we sometimes we wanna just do it in a 2D, you know, we don't have a 3D model of it, so we just draw everything in 2D, as you can see here. This works just like a normal uh, 2D component here, but it has the holes in it, so, you know, you're not eating, you're not building voids, okay? Or sorry, not in this case, not voids, you're not doing an erase, okay? And that's the advantage, okay, of using the hatch pattern, 
Okay, and I'm going to show you now that uh, we can do the same thing, the same idea, same principle to other, you know, other objects, for example. And uh, I'll try to show you, like, for example, on receptacles and light switches, as you can see here. Um, in this case here, I've got it on shaded, and that means that these are hash patterns. And if I come here and I change it to realistics, there are images. And I will now show you how I did that same technique as the holes from the strut. I will now show you how I did it for um, this particular. So <clears throat> the advantage here is that I can change a plate from uh, easily from a switch to a receptacle easily. Now, the advantage here is I only have two pieces of geometry. The, the back half is just a piece of geometry that's painted black. So when I'm doing the image, I can see through um, the holes here and I'll see the black in the background and now if it's a hatch pattern <coughs> uh, you know you'll see that uh, sorry the hatch pattern you I just drew in lines here and uh, let me go back to the hatch pattern here because uh, I guess I need to explain that to you so I took an image of course I uh, traced it and for the hatch pattern I just drew a bunch of lines okay and for the images I did you know field region okay and I did the same technique I came in here I selected everything for the hatch pattern oops and I selected everything and I used my origin points uh, for you know the pirate uh, my revit and I picked you know point a point B which is the plate okay um, I tried to do it to where I could you know if I stretch the image out I could get the you know the, the switches to repeat themselves but the problem is that it's in the plate uh, the first plate and I couldn't make that work so I just did it for one plate only okay so this is the dimensions of the plate all right, here's the dimensions of the hole for the receptacle or the switch, okay? And I just drew a bunch of lines in here just to give the hatch pattern, you know, a field look, okay? And I created the hatch pattern, and then here I created uh, the image. Same thing I did for the holes, I, you know, corner to corner. I created the, you know, saved the image. And once I had that done, um, I then brought it to my family editor. And as you can see here, right now I've got it on shaded, and I've got it on realistic. You know, and the advantage here is that there's just two pieces of geometry here. There's nothing else. So if, if I go back to say that, oops, sorry, 3D, uh, 3D here, uh, the advantage here is that I can select this. Now, because it's a material, the only way to change that is through type, of course. And I go from a switch to receptacle. Okay, there's no lines here, there's nothing. It's not going to take up any file size hardly at all. Now, the you do have to create, a, you know, a place to put all your files okay and under options you know I think file locations uh, depending on what I know there's a version here uh, render I can't remember but maybe it's I can't remember there's a version here where you start putting in your uh, your images and right now I'm in 20 I don't know which one that is maybe 22 23 that you can actually you know uh, save your images to a certain you know uh, place on your hard drive or your network drive whatever it is okay so that's the most that's that's the only con to this whole thing is that you have to save your images especially if you're using it on a team but on, on you know like I said hold on let's see here real quick uh, this is 20 21 I don't know if this, that's the difference here okay all right locations yeah like I said I can't remember what version it is but uh, but yeah you should be able to save your images I know eventually <laughs> okay all right and so that's basically it that's you know uh, the reason we do this and I know you may be asking you know, why is because sometimes you know I get uh, you know, you know, customers asking for walkthroughs and I don't want to have to have a model for a walkthrough and a model for just, you know, our typical, you know, everyday stuff. And so if I can figure out how to get a high resolution image, you know, for example, here I can go to ray tracing and as you can see, it's going to look really good, you know? Um, and I think it's pretty cool because, you know, you know, I've got to hear is this basically, this is your render. Now, of course I have a video I showed you guys earlier, uh, about how to use twin motion for electrical. And as you can see there, I try to make it as, you know, high res as possible without, you know, sacrificing file size. And that's kind of what I do. I just try to figure out the, to create the minimal file size and to get the highest resolution out of a, a render. All right. All right, guys, until next time. Thanks.